Whoa! No one gets in unless you're on the list. We're on the list. Yeah. It's like Rutabi. Steve Rutabi. Your brothers? I've been getting this question since high school, and it's done more to lift the Liver King Brandon message than any other question. The short answer is no. No. So I want to set the record straight. I want to expand and tell you why it's possible. No. I didn't touch the stuff. Don't touch the stuff, right? No. The answer to that is no. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I wanted to have you on the podcast, not because of this, but because of the incredible story of how you helped your kids, which hopefully we can get into. We had one incident with Rad that was tough. That uh, was maybe the hardest thing we've ever been through. Have you heard of pandas? No. So it's like, uh, I might get it wrong, but it's like pediatric autoimmune neurological disorder. And it came out of nowhere. And there's no break. It's nonstop. And there's violent screen. I mean, we can't believe this is happening. What the fuck happened? We have no idea. I mean, this is like occupying all of his awake hours. And, uh, and this is really why... Uh, fuck, dude. I never thought I would get emotional <laughs> on a podcast. Um, I remember he had sort of a moment of clarity, Rad did, where he said, uh, I wish I had a baseball bat and I would just, I would rather give myself brain damage than have the brain that I'm dealing with right now. Oh, fuck. God, that must have Jeez. broke your heart. Paul is so much more than a friend to us. You know, uh, Paul Saladino, we needed him. Uh, he was there for us when we needed him most. And, uh, and we're thinking, you know what, like we're eating this ancestral way. What else can we be doing? You know, I, I believe a hardcore keto carnivore diet can fix so many things. You know, you can get your child's life back. Yo, I had maybe 30 different ways to introduce this video. That little first part that comes before this talking part, before I do the rest of the video. And the reason that I ended up going with that one is because if you were to click off within 30 seconds, at least you would be left with the entire reason the Liver King has done anything from the beginning. This podcast, the Sevon podcast, where you'll see he's talking, he's in the top right corner of that screen. He will also be shown in multiple other clips here is the first podcast to my knowledge that the Liver King did. It's got 31,000 views. As a lot of you guys probably know, I'm good friends with Sevan. And since he had that podcast with the Liver King, every single time it circles back, I go, why is that not taking off? It's the Liver King. It's the first podcast he's ever been on for a very, very good amount of time. He was not seen anywhere other than TikTok first, then Instagram, and now all over the freaking world because it's what he wants. You know, so, so this is my job as the CEO of the Ancestral Lifestyle is to take this ancestral message mainstream. I'm going to go on every fucking podcast I can go on. If you'll take me, I'm going there. I'm going to spread this message. And once again, it's accessible to everybody. And why does he want it? That first bit is why. You know, I, I believe a hardcore keto carnivore diet can fix so many things. You know, you can get your child's life back. I'm going to go into a little bit of Joe Rogan. I'm going to go into a little bit of Derek Moore Plates More Dates. And of course, I'm also going to go into Vigorous Steve in this video. But most of this is going to be pulled from the Sevon podcast. I'll be interjecting here and there. This took a little while. Enjoy. If you dwell on them, then you're maintaining this mindset of a person who just failed years after that failure. Yeah. Like, that was a long time ago. Like, you got to move on. Yeah. And if you don't move on, you're going to get stuck. And some people... Look, there's some people that get stuck in high school forever. Yeah. Forever. We, we, you know, we know those stories. They had failures in high school. Maybe they got beat up in high school. You know, maybe they, uh, maybe they were an asshole and they got their comeuppance in front of the whole school and they never recovered. Yeah. They never recovered. Maybe they were a dick and they, they, were, they were talking shit to some guy and he just beat the shit out of him in front of everybody. And they're like, no. And every day that guy wakes up, fuck! <laughs> years yeah. later and thinks about this failure when my mom uh she had this boyfriend who uh gave us his kids clothes some hand-me-downs and for the first time ever i remember going to school i was like everything's gonna change i'm wearing these red wing boots these cool guest jeans i'm gonna look like them and, I, and i'm gonna fit in and all of this fucking hazing and get i, I would walk to class smacked me in the face with it and this guy's fucking hand is way bigger than my head it didn't knock me out but that's like, welcome to fucking middle school. There was nobody I could turn to. You know, I didn't have a dad. 
I didn't have anybody that I could turn to to share this with. I just remember uh, my self-worth was fucking non-existent. I was embarrassed, completely humiliated of the person of, that, that, I, that I saw in the mirror. So here's the deal. I'm wearing these boots and these jeans, and I'm thinking, everything's going to change. <laughs> I made it. I made it. And so we get to uh, gym class that day. Now it's time to go put my fucking boots and jeans on, and they're gone. They're uh -huh. fucking gone. Somebody took them. Long story short, of course, I go home without those fucking jeans, without my boots. It all starts all over again. It, it was tough. Um, I fucking hated some of these guys so bad. You know, yeah. the guy that did that, that, did that I mean, uh, uh, this other guy, Robert Bridgeford, I hope he's listening. And every day that guy wakes up, fuck, <laughs> years, years later, later and thinks, thinks about, about this failure. failure. You know, I'm, I'm going to football practice or gym one day. He just punches me in the face for no fun. I mean, again, it happens nonstop all the fucking time. Damn. And, uh, and th this is what one reason why I feel like um, I I've become hyper aware of things. You know, like you, you hear the vibration of a car, you know, because you, you don't know if, you're, if they're going to get out and jump the fucking shit out of you. You become hyper aware of, of your situation, where you are and, and how to grow and get better at everything all the time. You study how people communicate. Right. And, and pick up the, those habits from them. And so, yeah, I, 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 it's the best thing that I ever went through. I would never wish it on anybody. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring awareness to the 4,000 people a day who kill themselves. Our young men are hurting the most, feeling lost, weak, and submissive. So I made it my job to model, teach, and preach a simple, elegant solution called ancestral living, the nine ancestral tenants, so our people no longer have to suffer, so we can collectively express our highest and most dominant form. This is my fight. This is why I exist. Nobody deserves to go through four or five years of that. But, but kids today need to go through something tough. And this is part of the reason why I'm trying to promote Barbarian the way that I'm promoting it is because you know how many adults never have had a rite of passage, period? And they know something's missing. Boom, you got part number one. You got Joe Rogan sitting there, and this is from the same episode that he does with Derek from More Plates, More Dates. That's at the end of the episode, probably the first third maybe to the first third or a half of that video. It's three hours long, so upwards of an hour spent talking about the liver king. Over and over and over and over again, he's going to say, he's on steroids, he's a clown, he's on steroids, he's a clown. The liver king asked me to be on the show, like I'm really going to have that guy on. Makes fun of him for an hour or more. At the end of the show, doesn't talk about the liver king, but he kind of does in a way. Because in this liver king's first podcast, you're going to hear him saying that he was indeed bullied. He was a little bit short. He was a little bit smaller. He didn't have anything to him. Joe Rogan's kind of saying, you could let that define your entire life. And it's also in a way where you think that he would look at someone like the liver king he may have done something that just about everybody in the world hates right now, but you are in a way also commending him for overcoming an adversity that you said could cripple somebody for their freaking entire life. Wouldn't that have been something good to have heard on your own show? But these people on their shows, they kind of do that entire thing from the Joker. You finished? I mean, there's so much self-pity out there. You sound like you're making excuses. Not everybody, and I'll tell you this, not everyone is awful. You're awful, Murray. Me? I'm awful? Oh yeah, how am I awful? Playing my video, inviting me on the show. You just wanted to make fun of me. You don't know the first thing about me, pal. Look what happened because of what you did, what it led to. You're <laughs> laughing, you're laughing. I know. How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't I'll mean. tell you what you get! Call the police! Get what you fucking deserve! Except he's not going to, you know, Joe Rogan, he's not going to do that to Joe Rogan. That's not the intention. The intention is that the liver king wants to go on every single platform he can to talk about the ancestral lifestyle. And it's just like high school. This whole thing is just like high school. The exact thing that Joe Rogan, the bully in this situation is talking about at the end of that entire podcast. He's got an entire bit about how it can cripple somebody and he is crippling the liver king for everybody at this point should have seen that first 30 seconds trying to spread a message that saved his kids' lives. They have him on because they want to make fun of the liver king. You just wanted to make fun of me. 
He's not wearing a shirt, ha ha ha. And now he came out for having reached out to a couple of the people who were taking freaking steroids. I got nothing against more plates, more dates. It's what he does. If he's going to have that information come across his desk and he has no ties to the liver king, cool, whatever. But if you're vigorous Steve, anybody can make anything sound good. And the vigorous Steve does a very good job justifying his way of getting his name into the spotlight. We shouldn't know who Vigorous Steve is in relation to this entire topic because there's a way out of it. There's a way out of it where he does the right thing. That is, he's been sitting on this whole Liver King situation for a long time, right? It hasn't been allowing me to sleep at night knowing that the Liver King has been pumping this shit everywhere. Did you watch Savon's podcast? You didn't. You don't know why he's pumping this everywhere. You just think that he's trying to make a killing. Just like everyone with the freaking headspace of a freaking mouse is thinking. He took steroids. He's bad. He's a cheater. It's like, what is he cheating? It's like, he has supplements. He takes them. He believes in them. You saw in those emails that he believes in them. He believes he saved his kids' lives. Did you know that, Vigorous Steve? And I know that it came across a Reddit forum. Somebody put together the intake forum that you sent to the Liver King because they got the same thing. But the only one who did the hard thing would have been more plates, more dates. Although it is the thing to do, he did it in a way where it wasn't really coming after him. It's just like, hey, he took stuff. Now everybody knows. Everyone else who's jumping on it, jumping on his back, the Liver King's back, is rung number two. And on rung number three is Vigorous Steve. He's the bottom of the barrel. Yep, that was me. Liver King reached out to me in confidentiality. And instead of reaching out to him, telling him that I thought that he was going to be doing a wrong thing, I'm the guy who reached out to more plates, more dates with the confidential emails, no longer making it confidential. You're a real hero. I hope that anybody who goes to you with any information in the future just cowers in fear and has that held over their heads. Who knows what you're going to tell next about somebody? Drop a dime on somebody. You know what they say, snitches get stitches. Throw tomatoes, right? It's really easy. It's very hard to be the person who stands up in front of the person who's getting tomatoes thrown at them and call it quits. I don't know of one other person on the planet outside of Sevan who sees this from a different lens, but he's the one who did the podcast with the guy. Souza was on there. 31,000 other people saw it, but of those people, I wonder how short their memory spans are. Are they going to hear what the Liver King says in the beginning of this video and towards the back end? But before we get to that, a little bit more about how Joe Rogan doesn't really know who he's talking about. He just sees something for what it is and wants to throw the first stone. It's the same kind of outrage that you should have at them thinking that it's triggering to have actual data on the food you're eating. Yeah. Like, you should know what you're eating. You should know what the calorie and what the nutrient content is of the food. It doesn't mean anybody should tell you what you should and shouldn't do. But fuck off, fat professors. Yeah. Fuck off. You guys are unhealthy. Yeah. And that's not that's not in any way good. Yeah, it sucks if someone's fat and they feel bad if someone calls them fat. You're right, and someone shouldn't do that. But they're fat. Yeah, and you're fat. And yeah, and you, the promotion of stuff that's not even food too. Yeah, like it's uh, donuts. Yeah, like I'm not saying you shouldn't indulge, but it's like yeah, you should earn it. Yeah, earn indulgence. If I have a piece of cake, I fucking earn that shit. Yeah, and if I don't earn that shit, I feel gross after I eat that piece of cake. But I try to balance it out, and a lot of people are not – they don't have the willpower to balance it out. They don't. They, they're not going to. They're not going to self-correct. Yeah. They're not going to look at their gut in the mirror and go, Jesus, what am I doing with this? I say, hey, I really want this piece of gum, but I'm not going to have this piece of gum. You know, I'm, I'm going to wait 15 minutes before I eat this piece mm. of gum. And mm -hmm. he's like, why, why, why are you going to do this? And I said, well, this is how I do everything. You know, you're going to earn it. You know, if you just go ahead and, and, and I'm going to do uh, – <laughs> I made a story about this, um, doing a workout in the car. You know, you can do isometric, isometric holds, you know, and you can start sweating. And I'm getting a pump in my biceps and, my, and I'm like, I earned that piece of fucking gum. <laughs> and, and, and you know how it tastes better. Everything tastes better, man, when you earn it. Life is just better when you earn it. And, and do I, I, you know what, I'm absolutely, I'm obsessive about this. You know, I, I'm sure that I've taken myself to depths. I don't recover nearly enough. Um, but it, it's the way that I'm wired. And, and so I hear a few people um, criticize, you know, that liver king way. Hey, aren't you overtraining? What kind of message are you sending? You know what I'm really worried about? I'm, I'm worried about, you know, these people that are passively suffering that aren't doing shit. Do I give a shit about the less than 1% like me that are overtraining? And I'm going to encourage them to overtraining, you know, overtrain. I'm, I'm not worried about the liver kings. These guys will figure it out. 
again, that was at the end of the podcast. At the beginning, he's talking about the liver king, and he's talking about how dumb he thinks he is. He's a cheater. He wants to come on my show. What a joke. You just wanted to make fun of me. And then at the end, he says things that align directly with things that the liver king was saying in the Sevon podcast. Dude. The thing there, of course, was that Joe Rogan, if he's going to eat a piece of cake, he wants to feel as if he's earned the piece of cake. The liver king, if he wants to have a piece of gum, it's how he does everything. He wants to feel as if he has earned that piece of gum. He delays gratification because he is the one who's in control. If I don't control my need, it's going to control me. I can hear everybody right now saying, yep, you really delayed gratification taking all those steroids. Well, I guess... He was 41, 42, 43 years old when he started, from what we know. Doesn't change the fact that he lied to everybody about it. And I guess while we're here, while we're at it, let's get a little bit into superheroes and how that entire deal works. So it's kind of an interesting scenario for some of the actors because I think just uh, unspokenly some of these interviewers know to not ask the question. Right. But like, it's just an interesting scenario in which I would wonder what the best answer is if it's just point blank yes well let me tell you a case there was a guy who got really jacked for a superhero role and he did a friend of mine's podcast Mm -hmm. and he said to him before the podcast i'll talk about anything but do not ask me about drugs Uh, i just please don't talk to me about steroids or drugs mm. it was the number one thing he did not want to talk about same freaking podcast where you're talking about the liver king i'm gonna have to find this clip where the liver king says that he didn't want to go on any podcasts ever this is this is why i'm like you know what did i want to go on this on your pod? i didn't really want to do any of this no so, no yeah, i know you've been asking me to go on a podcast for a over while. a year <laughs> yeah over a year <laughs> and uh and you probably don't know this but i told liver queen i'm never fucking going on this podcast because i'm never going on a podcast period but i really feel like it's an obligation it's a responsibility in life we know what the path is to a better kick-ass fucking life, and it's not getting in line. It's, it's doing these things that stretch us. It's sharing this message and, and, and hopefully motivating and creating enough momentum in people's lives to become primals. And so then they can touch the shoulder of the person next to them and they can do the same. Maybe this is why. Because the only reason everyone's mad at him is because at the beginning of the More Plates, More Dates video, hey, you take steroids, hey, you take steroids, hey, you take steroids, hey, do you take steroids? He says no every single time. He's lying. The short answer is no. I didn't touch the stuff, don't touch the stuff, right? The answer to that is no. But is it worse to lie than it is to say before an interview with a person, don't talk to me about steroids? We don't know who he's talking about here. It could be Chris Hemsworth, it could be The Rock, Black Adam and Thor. Could be Wolverine. Who knows who he's talking about? But this individual, talk to his podcast friend, says, don't talk to me about steroids. Now, what would happen if every reporter, every single one who talked to Chris Hemsworth ever, walked up with a microphone? Hey, are you on steroids? You tell me. What's he going to do? Chris Hemsworth, the owner, or at least the figurehead for the Center app, $200 million, I think that thing sold for. I don't, I don't actually think it's problematic, by the way, for somebody to juice up for a role to represent a superhero character it's more when they like they lie but they also have marketing and or products centered around their physiques and Mm. what they achieved for that role like for example with hemsworth he has like this app that sold for 200 million dollars that is centered around workouts and stuff but some of the marketing around that will be like train like thor you know Mm. this is what thor did how to get his physique sort of thing yeah that's where it gets kind of murky So Chris Hemsworth is just as bad as the Liver King, but he hasn't had an individual such as Vigorous Steve yet rat him out. Does that summarize that pretty well? Sells app for $200 million. Liver King has ancestral supplements. Ancestral supplements in a way help save his children's lives. The center app for Chris Hemsworth made him money and that's it. Studios and the, you know, the uh, massive amount of money that's involved in a film. Like the, the one thing they don't want is to jeopardize any of the potential income, right? Yeah. And if you come out and say, you know, the only way I got this way for the Hulk is I, I had to take massive amounts of steroids and this is just how it is, people are gonna get upset. Oh, you cheated. And yeah. there's, this, there's a mentality as you go further down the line that people are less and less educated about the realities of fitness and physiques. As you go further and further down the line, there's a mentality where people are like, Barry Bonds cheated, Mark McGuire cheated, those are cheaters. Or Lance Armstrong. Yeah, Lance Armstrong cheated. And they're just uneducated. 
I really want to think that you're a smart guy, Joe Rogan. I mean, lots of people think that you're a smart guy. You just said people are uneducated. He cheated, he cheated, he cheated. He was just trying to make a bunch of money. Does it look like it? Yeah, he lied. The same way that these superheroes in these movies, which the producers and the people who are going to lose profits if the Hulk comes out and says that the only way he got all hulked up was if he were to have used performance enhancing drugs because people are dumb, they're not gonna get it. At some point in the beginning, I said everyone's got the brain the size of a squirrel, they're gonna look at the liver king and not understand that the only reason that anybody knows anything about the guy might be because of the way that he looked. People like to look at Chris Hemsworth and Thor because of the way that he looks. Maybe you could use this as an opportunity to start educating people on your platform about performance enhancing drugs. Maybe that's something the liver king could talk to you about. Hmm. The incredible story of how you helped your kids, which hopefully we can get into. You know, I, I feel an obligation and a responsibility. Yeah. You know, this is why I say if you know these things and these things are free and these things are accessible and you can start implementing these things, the nine ancestral tenants today, and it will radically change and transform your life for the better tomorrow. You know, and, and when you know this stuff because your kids were sick as fucking hell and my boys were taking ambulance trips to the hospital because they stopped fucking breathing. They turned blue. They needed EpiPen shots. They would take ambulance trips to the hospital and then stay in the hospital because they didn't recover their breathing. You oh know, and goodness. how long are you going to put up with that? You know, you uh, 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 as a as a good cave dad that really loves your guys like this is your purpose in life. You got to make sure that that you're that you're going to be able to raise your kids, right? This is your job. And so we got just tired of the same answers. It was just more Benadryl, more bullshit fucking EpiPen and it, just stay away from the, stay away from dogs. Stay away from dust, stay away from grass, stay away from pollutants in the air. So it's like what do you fucking want, you know, to happen? So you keep looking for solutions. And, uh, and finally, we found ancestral living. And that really resonated with us, right? We cut out the seed oils. We cut out the liquid calories. We cut out all processed foods. And we did that overnight. We cleaned house. Uh, Liver Queen did it. She cleaned fucking house. She took absolutely every, <laughs> everything out. I mean, there was no going back. And I'll admit, um, I was like, fuck, like my ice cream. Like I, I don't have a kid. I don't plan on having kids ever. Personal choice on my end. However, I have spoken to however many people who have kids, however many ages they have them, and the way that they talk about their kids, the thing that they would do for their kids. You can say he's going to lie about whatever the hell he's going to lie about. A lot of you guys hear that and say, didn't you read the emails? He wanted to get a million followers in a year. He was taking steroids. He lied to us. Yeah, but do you really think that he's going to lie about his kids? About what he says about his kids? In a period of time when it was the first podcast that he had ever done, in a, peer, in a podcast that's three hours long where over the course of that podcast, which I do recommend you listen to the entire thing of, he says the same freaking thing over and over and over again. It takes a real, real messed up psychopath to use their kid and throw the kid in front of the freaking shield and say, this is the reason that I'm doing all of this. And mind you that he did this podcast on March 18th of 2022. The emails with who we now know is Vigorous Steve were sent on June 29th of 2021. Sevan says right there that he was trying to have him on for a year at that time. I didn't really want to do any of this. No, so, so no, I know. Been, you've been asking me to go on a podcast for a Over while a year. Now. <laughs> yeah, over a year. <laughs> and, uh, and you probably don't know this, but I told Liver Queen, I'm never fucking going on this podcast because I'm never going on a podcast, period. Let me think. March, April, May, June. That's four months before this email was sent out. He was trying to have this guy on the show. The entirety of that time, you'll hear him saying that the reason that he wants to have him on the show is because he wants to talk about the reason for him doing this, which is because of his freaking kids. And then I wanted to have you on the podcast, not because of this. <sighs> Yes, I've done steroids. But because of the incredible story of how you helped your kids, which hopefully we can get into. The apology video, he brings up mental fortitude. He brings up mental disorders. When I talk about the 85% of the population that suffers from self-esteem issues, that's me. I'm part of that statistic. Struggling young boys. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring awareness to the 4,000 people a day who kill themselves, or young men are hurting the most, feeling lost, weak, and submissive. So I made it my job to model, teach, and preach a simple, elegant solution called ancestral living, the nine ancestral tenets, so our people no longer have to suffer, so we can collectively express our highest and most dominant form. This is my fight. This is why I exist. And we've already covered that. We see that he was one of them. Why wouldn't he want to help people like that? 
Also something that he brought up in a period of time where he's got really no other reason to talk about it other than he truly believes in it. As soon as we switched over to wild cod, organic, nose to tail, chiefly liver and bone marrow, I'm telling and within two days, my kids were incredible. My, my boys that were not thriving reached a, a level of thriving, a vibrancy, a robustness, a mental clarity, this sort of personality that you realize, holy shit, like you felt guilty that they were living a doled down version of themselves for all these years. You were and basically that, poisoning them. At 100%. And that's child abuse. When you know this, then it becomes your obligation and your responsibility. And I say, you're a piece of shit if you don't go model, teach and preach this to the world. You know, because how many, these are kids. You know, they deserve the chance at a badass fucking life, at a decent life but we continue to sedate them and give them poison, you know, and they're living this re extremely dulled out version of themselves. Kids, there's an epidemic of kids with mood disorders today. This is, this is beyond me. Metabolic disorders, there's an Crazy. epidemic. You know, and, and once again, there's a simple, elegant solution. A simple, elegant solution called ancestral living. Elegant solution to the world's most vexing problem. And it may be so elegant that it's optimal. And, and now we have, we got something to do about it. You, you switch your child's diet when they're around three or five, you start moving to organ meat. You're saying it was successful right away. You just saw your kids basically just light up. And has it been just smooth sailing since then now uh, for 10 years? We had one incident with Rad that was tough. That uh, was maybe the hardest thing we've ever been through. Have you heard of pandas? No. So it's like, uh, I might get it wrong, but it's like pediatric autoimmune neurological disorder. And it came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere and uh, it's like nonstop, like obsessing over like irrational behaviors. And we'll never forget, like one day out of nowhere, he came up and said, hey, if a bad person spits, if you look at it, does it make you bad? And of course, the answer is no. What if what if you're just in the area? Well, of course, the answer is no. Uh, what if it touches you? Of course, the answer is no. But now the questions, the same questions repeat. And he doesn't even know that he asked that question and he's obsessing over it. And there's no break. It's nonstop. And there's violent screen. I mean, we can't believe this is happening. What the fuck happened? We have no idea. I mean, this is like occupying all of his awake hours. And, uh, and this is really why. Uh, fuck, dude. I never thought I would get emotional <laughs> on a podcast. Um, Paul is so much more than a friend to us. You know, uh, Paul Saladino, we needed him. Uh, he was there for us when we needed him most. And, uh, and we're thinking, you know what, like we're eating this ancestral way. What else can we be doing? And Paul dissected everything. And he's like, and we eat some chocolate and it's a hundred percent cacao fucking chocolate, hundred percent cacao chocolate with some wild, uh, uh, honey. And, um, and Paul's like, this is, this is it. You got to take this out. And, um, and, and I'm telling you, like, you, you've lost your kid, man. Like your kid, there's no resemblance of your kid. And, wow. um, I remember he had sort of a moment of clarity rad did where he said, uh, I wish I had a baseball bat and I would just, I would rather give myself brain damage than have the brain that I'm dealing with right now. Oh fuck. God, that must have broke your heart. Oh, and he's 11, probably 11 at this time. Um, maybe even 10. I don't know. But anyways, uh, Paul's like, well, everything you're doing is pretty solid, but here's what you got to do. Like the honey and the chocolate within two days, he got better within two fucking days. He got better. And, um, and so, again, this is like, this is, I think, so important for people to hear this. People need to know that, that this stuff happens. You know, first we're like, are we going to share this with people? We, people need to know, you know, I, I believe a hardcore keto carnivore diet can fix so many things. You know, you can get your child's life back. And, and so, no, it, has, it sure as fuck hasn't been smooth sailing. You know, this was much worse than anything we'd ever been through with them. Like, this was much worse than uh, um, going to the hospital. You know, not being able to breathe, you know, so so this is my job as the CEO of the ancestral lifestyle is to take this ancestral message mainstream. I'm going to go on every fucking podcast I can go on. If you'll take me, I'm going there. I'm going to spread this message. And once again, it's accessible to everybody, you know, and, and, and some people will say, oh, you know, uh, the eat part. Well, that's expensive. You know, first thing I'll say is we'll focus on the other eight. The other eight ancestral tenants are, are, don't cost anything. They don't cost anything. Oh yeah, he's trying to make a bunch of money. And whatever you're spending money on related to food right now, I believe it's a wash. I believe it's a wash. And when I started eating organs, it was two or three dollars a pound. And and then I decided, fuck, I'm eating a lot of organs. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go start Liver King Ranch. 
So I don't have to fucking pay. I just drop cows and I drop I drop babies. And and now my herd is growing instead of instead of uh, being reduced every time I take a cow. So now not only does it not cost me anything, the, the thing is we got to figure it out. Right. And, and it's it's I say it's virtually free because you just got to be inventive. You got to figure out a way. How can you get these organs? A lot of butchers and a lot of processing facilities are actually paying to give their organs away. You just got to go develop a relationship. You got to go figure out how you can get this stuff in your life. Because when you start to build a platform and, and people are listening to you, you got an obligation to be more than entertaining. If you know how to improve somebody's life and, and what is life about if we don't have our health? This video has approached over one hour in both recording time and clip time, so I need to stop. There are a couple of things I need to touch on though. I plan on using a picture of Tia Toomey in the thumbnail of this video. I want to do that to pull some people into it who may have not clicked on it in the first place, and this is the point in time where I'm going to talk on that. I did a live reaction to the Liver King's apology video, and in that comment section there is somebody named Maureen without a profile picture who says, I was living ancestrally and still felt totally fucked up in my 40s, so I turned to pharmaceutical hormones, but I still kept trying to convince the public that it was all lifestyle and hopefully they'd buy my supplements because they don't want to eat raw liver, but want my life all one sentence. No freaking commas, no periods, no nothing. Red flag on this comment. That was a run-on sentence, Maureen. But she goes on to say, his whole message is a complete lie. Sometimes living ancestrally isn't enough to cure you of every physical and mental problem in the world. His message is to help those 85% suffering with mental health issues so he lies to them. He's in a lose-lose situation of his own creation. Would you have the same sympathy in your voice if Tia came out and said you're right? She's been taking hormones because of her low self-esteem in her own ability to win the CrossFit Games. Number one, he never claimed anywhere that it is liver and liver alone that is going to lead to his fixing of these problems. The first thing I'll say is we'll focus on the other eight. The other eight ancestral tenants are, are, don't cost anything. In the beginning of this video, I plug in a part where he says that barbarian is something where he comes and he gives everybody the opportunity to put themselves through something so challenging that they don't really experience any longer in this life. Something that he was put through in an unfortunate way when he was in middle school, in high school, grade school. And something that's definitely lacking in the modern day world. Something where a lot of people were doing it and getting quite something out of it. The last quarter mile was by far the most challenging thing I have literally ever done in my life. He says right before this little bit where I'm going to be responding to this comment that there are eight other tenants that are free that all don't involve eating liver. I should pull those up. Wow, first thing that pops up when you put a nine in is the nine ancestral tenants. It sounds like it's working, Liver King. Sleep, move, shield, connect, cold, sun, fight, bond. One of those is eat. So when Maureen says... People want to eat raw liver and buy my supplements. They are not going to save your life. It's like, well, how about everything else? Everything else, they're all good things that he's preaching. Anybody who strives towards that direction on any of those things, cool by me. Next up, we got the Tia Toomey thing. I respond to this one because I have to. It's only fair that I respond to that in here and now in this video. This is the most level thing that I have heard and is a great thought process to go through. I would have to say yes, it is hard to imagine, but I would have to imagine so especially considering that she never claimed otherwise. In this case, I am showing support for the liver king and he has openly lied. In her case, she would even be more clear. I cannot say that for sure, but I would hope that this is where my thoughts would go. Essentially what I'm saying is that even though the liver king has lied on multiple occasions, I am forgiving him. So I would hope that in the position in which Tia Toomey were to possibly test positive for performance enhancing drugs in the CrossFit space, I would also have to say, it's okay. But Andrew, you're the one who made a video on her. Everyone saw it. It's got 50,000 views on your YouTube channel. Uh-huh. Earlier in this video, Joe Rogan is throwing stones, throwing stones, throwing stones but he could be educating people to make their own opinions. I have known the entire time that the Liver King has been taking performance enhancing drugs, but I have enjoyed the presence of the Liver King and his processes because it can filter through my brain and then I can make educated decisions based upon the things that I know. If I talk about some stuff on the internet, more people can now know things. There are a lot of people who know some things and 95% of people knew Joe Rogan's one of them. 
he knew that he wasn't using anything. Basically, every freaking buddy knew that he was using steroids, right? The Liver King was using steroids. Why are you so mad? If it were to come out that Tia Toomey has been using performance enhancing drugs, I'd probably be the first one to make a video saying it's all good. I know that I called it, so please just like pat me on the back real quick. It's like, Andrew, you knew it all along. Oh, nice job, whatever. But once we move through that, and hopefully it's not that much of that, because I don't want praise for that. It's not something that I want. What I would want to do then is try to do exactly what I'm doing for the Liver King and basically find an avenue to which it was something that had to be done for whatever it was that she was trying to do. You can let your imaginations roam on that one. I do have an avenue that I could go down on that, but until the opportunity presents itself, we're going to keep talking about the Liver King. Just know that I would indeed plan on trying to back Tia to me. I want to end on this. I'm not a big bar goer. I'm not a big drinker. But I have had drinks. And when I've had those drinks, there's a goal to be accomplished, right? You're either trying to loosen up for the situation. You want to have a good time with your buddies. But one of the biggest things that people do when it comes to going out to have a drink is they want to loosen up to talk to the opposite sex. It could be men. It could be women. Have a drink or two. And maybe you have business deals that go a little bit easier. And you're with all your buddies. And it's not quite as stiff. Do you have a boob job? Do you get your eyebrows done? Have you had liposuction? Do you take half-naked pictures of yourself on the internet and then you get a bunch of followers and then you get companies to sponsor you and then you're making money? Maybe you make your own company. Who knows? But half-naked pictures is something that just happens everywhere. Click through Instagram, you'll see accounts everywhere with millions of followers and then you'll scroll through. Like, what have you done to offer to the world other than half naked pictures men and women have you seen legally blonde there's a scene in that movie where Elle Woods is talking to whomever her name is in court and she's got an alibi but she can't tell anybody what the alibi is because it would ruin her career you don't understand it, it would ruin me the person made her name in the fitness space i've made my fortune on the ability to perfect women's bodies with brooks butt buster workout something involving like waist trimming and butt rounding i don't know but the idea was this individual was at a liposuction appointment liposuction <laughs> It was her alibi. It would have gotten her name completely clear of the case. There were two instances there where Elle Woods wants to go the morally correct route and not tell everybody that that's what it was. There's another lawyer whose name I forget, but he's the guy who wants to say, we're going to say it because it's going to be good for the name as a lawyer. Why the hell not? Because I promised her I'd keep it a secret and I can't break the bonds of sisterhood. Screw sisterhood. Enter again, vigorous Steve. Bigger Steve wants to make his name in his, what is it called when you're a lawyer and you've got a company, law firm look good. We cleared this client's name because we had proof and an alibi and she couldn't have possibly been the one who murdered her husband. If you tell him, he'll probably hire you as a summer associate. I gave her my word, Warner. So what? Not because of the ammonium flaglocolate or whatever was in her hair and the curls that Elle Woods eventually found out. But At the risk of deactivating the ammonium thyglocolate? Because of the liposuction appointment, which would have ruined her career. There's a way to go about doing things. Learn from Legally Blonde next time, guys. Have you had coffee before? Does coffee help you get you through your workday? Does that workday lead to you making more money over the course of your life? And you can attribute that to the fact that the coffee kept you awake to make that money. The Liver King took performance enhancing drugs. He had a goal in mind. Everyone's got something that they're getting towards. You're probably pissed. You're probably pissed. But sit there and think for a minute. What do you do that you don't really want to tell other people that you do? Or maybe you do because you're holier than thou. But imagine being in his position. You're not Chris Hemsworth. You're not going to get reporters fired for asking you whether or not you're on steroids, essentially wrecking their careers. I mean, is anybody questioning The no. Rock or questioning I think they kind of know it's like a not going to turn out well if they ask. Like, they probably get like fired, I imagine, if they actually ask that question to them. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Because I think that's an important topic. Yeah. No, and it just gets swept under the rug because it's like, it's nothing about answering the question other than getting the breaking story is conducive to that reporter's like longevity of their career. Right. <laughs> Essentially. You're going to go on podcasts like Logan Paul, quite a bit of power, and they're not getting shut down. Hey, are you on steroids? Or they're going to laugh at you, dude. You just wanted to make fun of me. Before you cast the first stone, know what you're throwing it at. Just because he took steroids doesn't make him a bad dude. And like a whole lot of people out there, I want to see what he does next. Andrew Hiller, out.